Well, I was in the hospital. It had been 385 days. Long over a year, and I was... I'd, by then, I just said, whatever, whatever you want, God. And out of nowhere, they came in and they said, we have a heart for you. We always knew that was going to happen. Eventually, I'd need a heart transplant. But when? I thought, you know, when would that happen? And at age 35, 34, really, I went into heart failure. I was on oxygen all the time. And uh, that's all my daughter knew. Dad had a had uh, oxygen. You know, he, she used to say, she used to say, you know, girls have makeup and boys have oxygen. That's what she thought. That's how sick I was, and that she was around it all the time. So they finally, I, I was. There was a meeting that basically said, "Listen, you've got about a year to live. It's really bad. We need to figure out whether we're going to restructure your heart completely." or if you need a heart transplant. But to get a heart transplant, you have to qualify. Fortunately, I qualified for a heart transplant. But they said it would take maybe about a year. And I said, well, wait a second, you just gave me a year to live. Why is it gonna take a year? Not very many people sign up to be organ donors and you're O positive, which is the most popular blood type. So all we could do is hope you know, and I had to stop gigging, I had to stop playing the piano, I was at home all the time, I couldn't go out, I wasn't able to do much, people started asking what's going on, but you know, all throughout that time, I had really just struggled, because I, I wanted, I, I said to Heavenly Father in prayer many times, I know that for me to live, somebody has to die, or somebody's going to die. I don't know how to accept that because I know that you love everybody and there's a family that loves this person. And so I prayed for my donor family, whoever they were going to be, every day. It was really hard to understand that, how I could take somebody else's heart. And one time my brother was in my room and uh, gave me a blessing according to our faith. And uh, it's a prayer and... Um, he basically said, listen, because you're a donor, you're able to live a little longer, but because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, you'll live forever. I was like, oh, I get it. I get it. And uh, that's when I recognized and realized, you know, it's a miracle because doctors are able to temporarily raise us from the dead. And if they can do that, I have no doubt that God can raise his son, that he can live forever, and that we can one day also, even after we die, get our bodies and live forever. It was a crazy time, and it was a hard time, but I, I, would, I would, honestly, I would go through it again. And the only reason I say that is because when you're in that moment and you have faith and you believe that Jesus has all power and that he loves you it was as though he just cradled me and I felt like I was on such a high of love and I can't even describe it but it was this intimate sacred feeling that I felt like everything is going to be okay and it was my job while I was sick to make sure everybody around me felt that way and I wanted my my daughter and my family to know that God has a purpose for each of us and there was purpose in my suffering and I do now think that I'm able to pull out of that pain and things I went through not just then but after the transplant into that album and into the 40 hymns for 40 days <laughs>